Hello and welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And this series of videos we are talking about the CSI and NET and the preparation for CSI and NET. And one question I have been receiving for long days that is a study plan for CSI UGC NET exam. Because you know, although we know uh, many things about CSI and NET and actually I myself made a lot of videos which you can watch and understand uh, the exam but still we fail still we have mistakes in different parts because we fail to follow all the resources correctly because right now there are many resources available in the market there are books available there are notebooks available there are dvd materials available coachings and many more things that are there mock test series and we at shomus biology also provide all these materials but the question that i often receive from my students is that how to utilize all the materials because although the materials are huge but it's very important to know how to use them so this video is to tell you exactly how and in what steps you are going to use all the resources that are available for the preparation of CSIR UGC NET exam. So stay tuned and watch the video. Okay friends, so we are going to talk about the study plan for CSIR NET exam for life sciences and the study plan that I am going to tell you based on two different types of people, two different types of aspirants for the exam. So let me divide the aspirants based on the number of marks you are getting in your previous exams. For example, uh, if you score near about 80 to 90, that range of students we call it category A student and then students who score between 60 uh, to 70, 80 that is the range we call them category B student. Uh, so these are the two types of category that we are going to deal with because you know, uh, if you score more less than 60 percent there is a totally separate video for that I will be uploading that soon too. So let's assume now you are belonging to the category you yourself know which category you belong based on your previous net score. Now let's assume you are category A students so you are kind of getting a score between 80 to 90 but you know 90 or 80 is not a sufficient score for neither getting an LS nor getting a JRF. So what you should do for that situation? You know the resources that we have these days, we can divide the resources into mainly uh, three different type. Type 1 of the resources are you know a lot of knowledge and concept building resources and the examples are video lectures that are available all around the YouTube not from my channel but for any other life science channel uh, which are available. So video materials and uh, books, peer reviewed books for example books like Watson Molecular Biology. Uh, books like Cell Biology from the uh, Lodish or Bruce Alberts, books like Campbell Biology. So these are the peer reviewed books, we are not talking about notebooks though. These are the books which will build up your concepts, videos as well as animations from different uh, houses like you know Sumana's INC animation or uh, Norton animation, all these different animation series. So these things will help you to get and gain concepts about different topics and this is really really important so this is resource number one resource number two is uh, informative resources informative resources means you know the notebooks that are there the handouts that are there if you enrolled in any kind of coaching they'll give you some notes and books or printed copies those are informative not for gaining a lot of concepts but gaining information and the third uh, type of resource are the MCQ questions or model question papers. So these are the three types of resource that we all have. Now the question is how exactly you are going to use all the resource in a way that you can score better, you can prepare better for the CSR UGC NET exam. That's I'm going to tell you. Now as we divided the type category 1 and category B students, so if you are a type A student or category A student, in that case Probably your preparation, your, your idea of concepts are quite well. That's why you're scoring always between 80 to 90, very close to the qualifying marks of LS that is 100 these days. But there are some mistakes. You're making same mistakes again and again in every single CSI NET exam. So you are technically weak. Uh, for the preparation of CSN net exam. So for that reason, you don't have to uh, generally understand a lot of this concept 
provoking books or videos or animations what you need to know is informative knowledge you may lack informative knowledge if you remember yourself in the last year's and if you score between 80 to 90 probably you have scored well in group c but not in group b very well the reason behind it is that you fail and you lack in the informative knowledge of life sciences which you need to work upon so in this case uh, you need to focus mostly on the informative parts like you need to focus on those notebooks uh, that are available in the market as well as the notebooks that you receive from a coaching institute so prepare there and most importantly the part you're lagging is practicing answering question papers that's the reason you are stuck at 80 to 90 range because you know you know the concept you know the subject well but when you're applying the knowledge in the exam by answering questions you make a lot of mistake you make a lot of mistake that's why you have a lot of negative marking as a result of which uh, you end up in a very less marks if you take away the negative marking from the side you may have scored more than 100 110 which may have give you uh, uh, GRF fellowship so that is the reason in this case you should focus on the two resources not the type 1 resource you should focus on type 2 resource informative uh, books and type 2 uh, type 3 resource which are MCQ questions previous years MCQ questions of CSI net exam as well as model question papers that are available in the market but be careful the while you're choosing for the model question papers not all the books are good in fact most of the books that are available in the market are total crap so you need to figure out which books uh, to go on I'll be making a separate video on telling you how to gather a lot of good information and good MCQ questions but although the books are very rare so if you buy one book and they claim to have 5,000 questions among 5,000 you'll get almost like uh, 200 300 questions which are actually worthy of trying so that's an idea you should prepare on these two so the study plan for you will be first you uh, look for uh, it will be a question based approach for your preparation that means you have the uh, MCQ question start solving MCQ question group wise or unit wise okay so you prepare unit 2 start solving the MCQ question of unit 2 while solving the MCQ question of unit 2 if you have any difficulty in any question you you pause there you go back and you watch a video or you you look for the informative book to gather the information or you can also use Google always internet uh, to get your answer but you need to invest some time not only for reading but to get an answer to the question that you're stuck in that should be your approach so if you're not doing this approach you're doing it wrong you may uh, only read and read that's that's the problem that most of the students are making who, who are struck at between 80 to 90 marks because they're reading from the books again and again and again not preparing anything that is the problem you need to go for a question based approach for your preparation try this approach and I bet you will find yourself in a better position in the upcoming net exam now uh, we come back to the type 2 students so if you are belonging to the category B students because we've been talking about the category 1 since then so what about if you are a category B student scoring a marks between 60 to 70 something that range that means don't mind though but that means your preparation is not up to the mark your knowledge and concepts are not up to the mark to match the standard of CSI and net uh, question paper so in that case you need to build up your concepts first so for that category B students you may devote more time for the preparation as well as you keep at least one year for your preparation time not six months remember because many people think that as the exam happen or always uh, after every six months they always think of like preparing for six months is the window no window can be depending upon your preparation style it depends on your knowledge and your availability of time so in this case I will recommend you go for at least one year of preparation and and in this one year of preparation go for six to eight hours of preparation every single day uh, because you need to build up a lot of concepts you have a loophole in your knowledge loophole in your concept so you go back there so what you should do is you go for resource one which are peer-reviewed books you go, like books like Leninger principle of biochemistry books like you know Albert's books like okay so you need to go for all these peer-reviewed books and prepare for the books now if you find yourself difficult reading the book because you know book reading takes some more time that's true but those are the books which will give you the actual ultimate concept of every single topic that's why reading book is always necessary but apart from that uh, if you have time you go for the video lectures video lectures are out there in my youtube channel 
uh, and also many other channels. So you will find uh, almost uh, in my channel you will find video lectures of CSINet almost every single topic even multiple times. Uh, so you can watch those video lectures there and consult the books together to first get the concept of that thing or you can watch animations because animations can help you to grasp the mechanisms very fast compared to reading the book. So once you know those mechanisms get the concept then come to the second part of your preparation that is practicing MCQ question papers and wherever there is a problem you should go back to the informative part of the book read from the informative books and then again try solving the question papers and if there is any difficulty you should repeat that style again. So resource 1 then resource 3 then resource 2 and that way you should continue this cycle of utilizing three different types of resources for the better preparation of your subject. Now if you belong to type 2 or category B uh, you also need to check uh, your, your, your score repeatedly because you know you are lacking the knowledge, you are lacking the concepts. So you need to check your concepts always and to check the concepts you always need to try solving the type uh, of group C questions that are there in CSINET exam. Because if you score between like 50, 60, 70 that means you don't have very well score in group C. You have very difficulty understanding group C question. Am I right? So if that is the situation then you go for the group C type of the question and try solving those questions. You will find yourself very difficult of the angle the question being asked. So you need to grasp that knowledge, you need to grasp the angle to answer that question. You may need to devote a lot of time to answer even one single question. It may, it may take almost one hour to find the answer of one single question of group C. So in that case you need to utilize first the last 10 years question paper of CSI net then go for the model question paper for understanding your concept. Once you know that you have improved a little bit then you become the type uh, A category student then you can practice the same way we have talked about regarding the type A. But remember for you it's mandatory to study books, it's mandatory to study from the videos and animations first and obviously keep one, hour, one year in your hand for the preparation. Now although uh, keeping all these things in our mind you know sometimes it's very difficult to follow but remember one thing no matter how much resource you gather because you know it's a bad habit of most of the students who tend to gather a lot of information buying every single book that is available in the market uh, asking me constantly like what I should read for a very particular topic even uh, from a unit you know unit can be divided into subtopics even the subtopics they can ask like which one I should read uh, tell me sir which one I should read for this part for T cell development so uh, nothing like that you know it's not important to gather the books it's important how many books you finished reading not about how many books are there and piled up in your desk keep that in your mind and no matter how much information how much resource you get if you don't utilize that resource well your preparation will be in vain. That's the true thing regarding uh, the cinema, you know, we all know that multi stellar films are not always good uh, because you need to utilize that uh, actors in a better way to get most out of the uh, movie. So you need to have a very strong storyline to get a good movie. The same thing here, the storyline here is your preparation schedule and study plan. If you don't have a good study plan, no matter how good information, no matter how good resources you get, you will fail. So keep this thing in your mind and I hope this uh, video will help you to get uh, the idea regarding the study plan. Uh, so if you like this video please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that.